Hello and welcome back to Math and Tea, the show where we talk math and drink tea. I'm your host, Dr. Joseph Van Hai, and in today's episode, we're talking about a very important question. What is math? Well, I'm guessing if you're watching the show, you've taken a math course before and you have some idea of what math is. So my question is more about what is it that the modern study of mathematics is about? Or what is it that a professional mathematician, such as myself, actually does for a living? It's not as obvious as it sounds. I've heard someone jokingly suggest that mathematicians just multiply bigger and bigger numbers together. And that's kind of the problem. We have an inherent idea of what certain professions are about. What a chemist does, and what a biologist does, and what an architect might do. But mathematics? Not so much. If we're not multiplying bigger and bigger numbers together, what is it that we do? Well, let's start with the basics, and a little story. Now, it's very common when you're out and you meet someone for the first time that they ask this question. So what is it you do for a living? Well, sir or ma'am, I am a mathematician. Oh, I loved math, right up until calculus. Hmm. I hear this answer with such frequency that I start to develop a twitch every time it comes up. But okay, okay, my twitchiness aside, what's going on here? Why are so many students good at even enjoying mathematics until they hit calculus? What makes calculus different? And it's not just students psyching themselves out either. There really is a difference. You see, calculus no longer follows a simple algorithm. Now, while there's many other things you can learn in a math class, like uh, concepts and interpretation, prior to calculus, when you're learning to solve a problem, you're typically learning an algorithm for solving that problem. Multiplying two numbers together? There's an algorithm for that. Finding the slope of a line? There's an algorithm for that. Solving for x? There's an algorithm for that. And that's part of why so many students like math. There's a simple algorithm, and if you just follow the algorithm, you get the right answer. There's no wishy-washy interpretiveness to worry about. That kind of starts to break down when you reach calculus. Calculus 1 consists of three primary parts. Limits, derivatives, and integrals. Now, of those three, derivatives are the ones that students tend to like the most, precisely because they're so algorithmic. There's a few short, simple rules, and you just have to fit them together in the right way. Then you're done. Limits and integrals, on the other hand, require a lot more work. A tiny change in the way the problem is written can necessitate an entirely different technique to be applied. Here, let's uh, see some examples. On this slide, you can see five limits, the kind of limits you might see on a standard Calc 1 exam. And as it turns out, each one of them requires a completely different technique to solve, even though I've made very small changes between them. The very first problem up here just requires what we call plug and chug. Just plug the number in and figure out what the answer is. You're done. Second problem, well, that change from a 24 to a 25 in the denominator means that plug and chug doesn't work anymore. Here, you have to factor and cancel. Well, the next problem, we've changed a 5 in the numerator to a 4, and that means that plug and chug doesn't work and factor and cancel doesn't work. So now you have to worry about there being a vertical asymptote. The next problem down, I take the limit going to infinity instead of the limit going to 5, and that means there's a horizontal asymptote to worry about. In the final problem, I've just put in some square roots in the numerator square root x, square root 5. And that means everything above doesn't work, and instead you have to multiply by conjugates. Fine. Now, it's possible to stick all of these techniques into one big algorithm. It's true. Like, say, do this one. And if that doesn't work, um, try that one. And if that doesn't work, well, uh, how about that one? And just keep going through the entire list. But the complexity of this new mega algorithm is orders of magnitude more than anything students have seen prior to that point. Instead of having a nice, simple two- or three-step algorithm, now suddenly they've got big, branching trees of dozens of algorithms that they have to have memorized in order to solve it. In Calc 2, there are whole flowcharts devoted to help students understand series convergence problems. And if you don't have the flowchart or the tree memorized, then all you're stuck with is a problem that reminds you of a bunch of techniques, and you just have to keep trying them until something works. And, to some extent, that's what I and other mathematicians do. We have a problem, and we have a bunch of tools that we know that work on problems like this. And we have to just start testing them one at a time until we find something that works. 
I like to joke that math is about finding a hundred ways to not solve a problem before finding the one way that does. And some of these tools can be extremely complex with more algorithmic complexity to them than the entirety of Calc 1. And sometimes we need to take a big problem and break it down into a bunch of smaller ones that we can actually solve. But one of the benefits of being a mathematician for years is that you start to develop an intuition for which tools will work and which ones won't. And that is at least a little bit about what being a mathematician is like. We are not just multiplying bigger and bigger numbers together. We're not applying simple algorithms to bigger problems. We're working with huge algorithms on huge problems. All of that being said, the types of problems I work on are also vastly different from the types of problems you're used to seeing in math classes. I'll talk a little bit more about that and the class that poses an even greater challenge to students than calculus next time on Math and T. But that's got to be all for now because um, I'm out of tea.